Uh, my name is Paul Wynn from Riverside. I tattoo sometimes, okay. do art at the times. I full time dad most of the time. <laughs> All the time? All the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, man, I just, just live in life, man. Just do my thing. My first tattoo I did when I was like in like high school, you know what I mean? And then I didn't think tattoos were ever gonna be a thing. It was just something we did with the homies, you know? Yeah. In the neighborhood. And uh yeah, and then fast forward, you know, went to school, did all that stuff and then uh started tattooing like way after college. I, I went to UC Riverside for marketing, did a bunch of stuff and then um met this uh business owner named Shrimp Bouchelle. Riverside, it was like right after 9-11 and all that stuff and he, uh, his company was having issues and we started helping him, uh, well, I, I was soliciting him at first for business because I wanted to pick t-shirts at the time, right? I was like, hey, you need some fucking t-shirts made? And he was like, yeah, and he was like closing up shop and I was like, oh. I think my buddy's band was playing across the street or something. And so we went, I walked across the street, I'm like, oh, this guy's, I'm gonna hit him up, see if he wants some business, you know, I was just hustling. So. I'm like, he wants business cards, wants some shirts, whatever. And he's like, yeah. And he's just like, told me his whole fucking life in like 15 minutes, right? And I was like, this guy's pretty cool. He's like, come back tomorrow. I'll fucking uh, we'll take you a tour of the shop. He has a big old acre in Riverside. And he, he made like, he worked for Delta Airlines. Well, he was like a, a third party company that they, they outsourced, you know, doing government stuff. So he made like big airplane wings and, um, and window frames, and all kinds of stuff for the government. It was pretty dope, and um, yeah, and I came there and met him, and I realized real quick that his company was, you know, like, and it was kind of shambles, but like it was, it needed work, you know? And he admitted it, he's like, yo, I need, I need help from my company. Mm -hmm. His computer systems were all outdated, his uh, certifications were all outdated, things like that. And then, um, so I took upon myself to go kind of like learn about government procurement. Like how to get government contracts. So I was like, it sounds like a dope gig, you know what I mean? Like something I can make money in. So I <clears throat> went to uh, Marshall First Base and took a bunch of classes on it. I like how to do work with the government. And then came back and got him recertified, got all his certifications done, and uh, got his corporation <laughs> redone, and computer systems all up, and this and that. And um, then I became his liaison. He hired me, so I became his his middleman for all the big companies like GCAN, Aerospace, Pilkington, uh, Boeing, Raytheon, just that. So I was his dude. So I would go there and do his sales. So I'd go there and meet all these owners of these big Boeing corporations and I would solicit his business. And I'd go online and get contracts for him. And then I brought a bunch of homies on board. So like, I brought a bunch of homies, started working there, and then next thing you know, all my homies were working there. And uh, during the process, his son, uh, Kevin and uh, the rest of his family were like, hey man, why don't you start tattooing? And I was like, man, well, yeah, I could do that. I've, I've done it before, you know? They're like, well, if we get your equipment, and you, you fucking tattoo us. I was like, yeah, you want me to fuck you up a little, you know? And then, uh, so they got me equipment, and next thing you know, like, it, it just kind of clicked, clicked back, you know? Like, I was like, oh shit, like, I should be doing art again, you know? Not doing art again, I was, I've always been doing it. Yeah. Like every time I did business, it was like, hey, make us flyers or do this for us, do that for us, like draw for us, do illustration, make our logos. But when I picked up the tattoo machine, it just became, just, you know, came back. Mm. So I started tattooing all those guys and then opened up shop at my parents' house, <laughs> you know, in their bedroom. Or like we had a five bedroom, so we made one room a tattoo shop. And I was tattooing at the house for two years, you know, and I was getting busy, like I was busy as fuck. Like I was more busy then than I am now like down the street. And um, so it got to a point where I was, you know, looking at magazines, I was trying to like, you know, be better in tattooing. And I was like, dude, I want to submit my, these tattoos I'm doing to this magazine, but I can't, you know? Why not? Well, I just didn't feel right. Cause I was like, I see this art, all these artists and they're like, so-and-so from, you know, this shop or, you know, this and that. And I'm like, where am I gonna be fucking pulling the wind from my mom and dad's house, you know what I mean? Like, it's just weird. So, to me, I was like, okay, you know, the next natural step was, all right, well, 
I gotta go find someone that I can learn from, you know, like another, another step in life. You know? like, apprentice or, or just kind of go to a shop and see anything? No, I was, I was actively looking, I wanted to be an apprentice. Oh, okay. That's just like, that's just me. I, I want, you know, find someone that, that I admire, someone that I like, someone that, you know, is doing what I want to do mm -hmm. and do whatever I can to meet that person and learn from them and, you know, be that person, you know? For me, it was like to be accepted, I guess you'd say, or to actually learn. You know, just in general, to but I have to learn from somebody. Right. You know, so I, I went to like went to the magazines, found people that like were killing it. You know, I'm like, dude, this so and so is killing it, so and so is killing it. You know, and I went to go seek these people out. And I, you know, I seeked out you know three, four people um, in various areas. Some took me serious, some didn't. Um, you know, some were you know asking for money and you know things like that, which was you know typical at the time, right? And then I ran into Ben Corn, which is my, my mentor, you know, in 2005. And once I showed him my portfolio, yeah, like, on the spot, Ben was like, yeah, dude, like, yeah, I'll apprentice you, you know, like, uh, come every day and just hang out with everybody and everyone, like, everyone thinks you're cool and they like you, then, you know, I'll, I'll apprentice you. Yeah, so I go to Michael every day, um, spend the whole day there, the tattoo shop. You know, learn from Ben. Ben was just doing these huge back pieces and huge sleeves and legs, shit. Like he was banging shit up. Like, and he was winning all the tattoo conventions, winning all the awards. He was like in all the magazines. He was he was big. You know, he was yeah. big. He was he was on TV shows. He was you know, he was the guy. You know, and um, for him to accept me, it was like a big deal. So it was a big honor, and uh, I didn't take it lightly. You know, I went there and learned and tried to just absorb and. You know, fucking vacuum the carpets every day, mop, fucking clean the toilets, and you know, wash the windows, and did all the shit before they opened. You know, I made my made needles and before everybody, and then like uh, they taught me how to make machines, they taught me how to make ink, they taught me how to like, you know, build machines, like just like pretty much all of the the shit that I think people need to know now that they don't know, and um, that's a true apprenticeship. I, I talked to. This, you know, one of the homies about this too, and it's like there's a technical side of things, and there's like a cr like creative side of things. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think there's a give and take, and a little bit of both. And as long as everything, as long as those things are fulfilled every day, it gives a good balance. So like, creative side is like the side that grows you. You know, like something you need to learn new things. You mm -hmm. know, and to do that, you got to be creative. You know, even if it's like a little bit, right? Like. You draw circles all day, and all of a sudden, like you know, I'm gonna draw oval. I'm like, oh shit, it's oval. Like that's a weird circle, you know. Like you know, just a little bit. But um, but even so, in every aspect of stuff, if I'm creative, a little bit, it fulfills it. Like if I'm teaching my daughter something, I'm trying to be creative. Like teach us something new, you know. Like it fulfills some type of creative fulfillment, you know. And in business, the same thing. So it's like. Instead of working in the business, which is the technical side, you work on the business, right? So it's like, how do you grow this business? How do I be creative to get this business to another level, to, you know, be different than any other business out there, you know, because you have to compete and diversity and, like, things change, world changes, so, like, you have to change with it, you know, or be ahead of it. So, like, how do you do that? Like, how do you um, fulfill that creative side? And then once you figure out something that's creative, then you have to find the technical side to make it work. And the technical side is the practice of it, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. when you practice it. So you, you know, find the creative, and then, you, and then practicing it. So, and that's the ladder, right? So it's like your ladder of life. So and when you practice it, it's like, okay, that fulfills a big void of, you know, just knowing that you're doing it and it's happening and it's coming to fruition and it's like, holy shit, this is really working or it's not working, you know? And all that kind of stuff, because unless you try, you won't know if that's really gonna work or not. You know, so you have to like just fucking do it. You gotta just do it. A big thing that happens all the time is, you know, people put me in the in the in the bracket of just the tattooers, mm -hmm. and that's something that like I don't want people to just think that I'm just, I was just a tattooer. You know what I mean? Like, because I feel like I'm more than that. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I'm done, and I'm still trying to do a lot of other stuff besides just tattooing. And tattooing is just a medium, right. just like anything else in life. And it's like painting, oils, acrylics, and which a lot of tattoo artists do too, you know? But 
no one calls him like a fine artist, you know, no one tells him like a, you know. That's so like, yeah, yeah. yeah, some of these guys are, they paint better than they tattoo, you know, or <laughs> 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 whatever. It's like, so why, why are they a tattoo artist, you know? Yeah. And for me, it's the same thing. It's like, okay, well, you know, if I end up picking up another medium. It's probably easier getting work as a tattoo artist than like a, a painter. Like and a, that's the problem. Yeah. That's the problem with this industry, yeah. is that a lot of people leave their perspective industries or whatever they're doing and jump into tattooing because they're chasing the money. And that's something that goes back to what I was talking before. It's like, um, I learned that early on too. It's like, you know, I've made a shit ton of money and I lost a shit ton of money and I've been there, done that. And then every time, you know, you chase the dollars, it fails. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's, it's a recipe for failure, dude. There's no stories in life. And I was like, you know what, that's right, you know, like, you just move fucking forward, you know, like, don't feel starship. And I, I do that all the time, I'm like, oh, man, fuck, sorry, man, I'm sorry. And they're like, and it's just kind of cut out of my vocabulary, you know, in a way. But he really kind of opened my eyes because there's a lot of cats that, you know, I felt bad cutting them off, but it was like, you know, it's necessary. I mean, it's, it's hard, you know, because especially if it's somebody that you know for a minute or two, you know, it's like. Yeah, but then I think when you realize the reason, behind it yeah. yeah you grow up yeah it's, it's like uh you know there's a reason for everything and yeah. uh people i don't know change whatever but yeah i'm not sorry yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah i'm not sorry but was, yeah but it is it is an eye-opener because you know like you know like you're saying i'm you know a whole different path in the life right now it's like i've you know all this shop studio and stuff like it's irrelevant man it's like it's cool i built it you know, when I built at the time, it was all for some, you know, a whole different level, like another reason, you know, mm -hmm. to like, it was not like show off, but it was like, you know, to uh, make other people comfortable, make myself comfortable. It was like, if I had to get, if a guest artist comes, I want him to be comfortable in my place, obviously, you know. Right. But, uh, you know, I've been here for nine years, 10 years. It's like, you know, I feel like maybe it's, uh, you know, what's the next step? You know, what's my next path? What's my next uh, path in life? Or not path in life, but what's my next, uh, goal or whatever you know and, and I have a few things in my head you know and I think it's just kind of slowly coming around and I, I, I feel the universe kind of bringing it on and I think it's happening you know whether I like it or not or whether I want to or not or yeah, I, I ask for it <laughs> yeah you know I think I think people are you'd be surprised what what the what the world gives you if you ask for it, you know whether you're ready for it or not I think um, take it day by day you know what I mean like literally take it by day, you know, wake up in the morning, take a big breath, you know, be grateful that you're fucking alive, you know what I mean? <clears throat> you, know, you know, don't fucking harp on the past. <coughs> like, whatever happened, happened, you know? <coughs> Save your energy for that day, you know? And don't even think about tomorrow, because it's not there yet, you know what I mean? Like, it's, you don't, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. but. You know, like literally, like take it day by day, and I've been doing that for years. You know, and every step of that day, just make sure you're happy. Mm -hmm. So you wake up in the morning, like you gonna be happy, brush your teeth. If you're not, don't fucking brush your teeth. Like I'm not saying like don't brush your teeth, but I'm just saying if you're not, don't do it. You know, <laughs> but it's like you, all your days are full of decisions, right? Yeah. So, but as long as your decision is in a positive, positive fashion, you know, and I think that's like the, the biggest thing. I just take you know, take it day by day.